Hi. <coughs> okay, my name is uh, Danny Nebenshoff from, uh, I'm the CTO of uh, Scribe Security. Scribe Security is focused on uh, securing supply, supply chains and through our work in Scribe, I had the chance to work with design, custom, uh, design partners and so on uh, implementing uh, the ideas of Salsa and other uh, frameworks. And this is what I want to share with you in this uh, lecture. Um, this is my book, only available for the he Hebrew speaking audience, but uh, you can see the translation of its uh, name. And this book, I uh, make uh, ideas of cybersecurity available through uh, stories, and I wish to use this method also here today. Uh, <clears throat> so instead of uh, uh, telling you about uh, this uh, setting and that setting, is this design customer and, uh, and whatever, I'll wrap up all the lessons we have learned in a, a fiction, uh, fictional setting. And first I will set up the story and then uh, uh, discuss why automating evaluation is, could be useful and why it is important. And then take you through our implementation journey along the salsa levels. And, and, uh, and then uh, take a few minutes to discuss the takeaways. Uh, <clears throat> what I want you to learn from this uh, lecture is uh, how one would go implementing uh, Salsa in a large organization and uh, how this could be evaluated. Okay, so I, I put on my, now my uh, Dev DevSecOps hat, so now I'm done as DevSecOps. And uh, I work in imaginary.org. And you know, Zev, DevSecOps gets the worst of all worlds. He's the DevOps guy, so he gets waking up in the middle of the night. And he has also the Sec in his name, so he can't be too friendly with the developers. So one day I get a call from my uh, CISO. Supply chain attacks are on the rise. We are getting customer questions. You are responsible. And I want you, the DevSecOps guy, to sign off every release that uh, our company releases. So after I uh, passed the shock, so I put on my hacker hat and tried to consider our pipelines. We have many diverse pipelines, thousands of uh, programmers, and, and numerous attack vectors. So I would never be able to sign off every build. So I returned with my answer to my CISO, but you know the CISOs, the guys are uh, experienced, and he gives me, gives me the CISO answer. Okay, you don't want to go on the risk uh, trial, go on the compliance, go do salsa. So I said, what's, what's the salsa thing? He said, I don't know, it's good for Google, it's, it's also good for us. So go ahead and, uh, and do it. Okay, so I uh, roll up my sleeves and try to understand what this Salsa is. So Salsa in like two minutes is a framework uh, that uh, originated at uh, Google and is intended to, to uh, uh, prevent tampering, secure artifacts, and uh, is focusing on the integrity of the artifacts build. Um, what's that? I don't know. Okay, uh, the way Salsa works is you implement uh, controls checklist, a checklist of uh, security controls that you should uh, <coughs> uh, do in your, in your pipelines. And these checklists, these uh, controls are in uh, some domains like uh, the source control systems and the sources, the build system, and the dependencies uh, that are brought into your uh, software project. As many uh, other frameworks, Salsa uh, uh, lays down uh, uh, four levels of uh, uh, compliance. You could go on Salsa level one, which would be the easiest, but uh, of course of the less uh, security value, and uh, try to get to level four, which would be highest security, but of course would require much more um, uh, the requirement, you, you would have a longer list of, uh, of requirements. One of the uh, important ideas uh, in this philosophy of Salsa is the idea of provenance. So provenance is 
a document uh, which is uh, a sort of evidence to the uh, build of the artifact. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, we are used to use, using many prov other provenance documents like the, uh, the food label we see on our, on our food. You know, we know who built it. We know uh, what ingredients w went in. And so the South uh, Provenance uh, document also requires to note who the builder is, and I should use artifacts only from trusted builders, uh, what recipe was used, uh, what uh, ingredients were used, and so on. Uh, since uh, it's evidence, so it should be treated as evidence, and uh, as you go up the salsa levels, you need to better protect the evidence itself. Uh, uh, so uh, each level of salsa puts more requirements on the generation and uh, protection of the provenance document. Okay, so after understanding a little bit about uh, salsa, I started to consider our pipelines. So as a large organi organization, our organization has many diverse pipeline technologies. We have source control management of uh, Gits of various kinds, Azure uh, DevOps, uh, SVN, whoever remembers the jazz, and, uh, and that's only a partial list. Uh, as the build systems, we have many build systems, Jenkins over Kubernetes as a, uh, a main uh, tool, but we still have Jenkins over in-house servers and other uh, pipeline technologies, uh, either old projects or uh, came to our company through uh, uh, acquiring other companies. You know, they came along with other technology stack. And of course, also legacy projects with no CI. Uh, so as a DevSecOps guy that got a project, the first step was to focus. And I decided to focus on two main pipelines. Uh, looking forward, uh, so Jenkins over Kubernetes is our uh, main uh, heavy duty tool in-house. And but, and we use uh, GitHub and GitHub workflows as an emerging te technology and as a technology that is uh, convenient for us to let uh, subcontractors and uh, um, for small projects to, you know, to handle the, themselves uh, before we uh, integrate, it, integrate them into our Jenkins uh, over Kubernetes uh, main pipelines. And as source control, I would uh, focus on GitHub I also focus on uh, Dockerized uh, applications as they are more and more common in our, uh, in our imaginary company. Um, when I consider how, how I would sign off uh, in the future uh, the um, assurance of the artifacts build, I remember that our pipelines are dynamic. Uh, pipelines are not static, you know, build them once and they stay. They change, they're changed by the programmers, by the DevOps guys, uh, due to f features that are needed, due to uh, new settings and new technologies that are incorporated, or uh, the need for temporary bypassing tests and uh, whatever, making things easier just to, to get things out. Uh, so um, how would I go if I would need to sign off every artifact, I would need to track all these changes and make sure that uh, I can handle it. And I knew I couldn't. So the uh, answer was uh, to evaluate the automation. I would not evaluate the compliance. I would not take a pipeline and make it compliant, but I would like to measure if the pipeline is compliant. And such a measurement would give uh, the value of a uh, gap report, and then the gap report could uh, be used to go ahead and fix, uh, ma manually f fix whatever needed. Um, so with these ideas of uh, focusing on uh, two main pipelines and uh, automating the evalu evaluation, I set up on my way, on, on the journey of the salsa levels. Okay, so the first steps, of course, our salsa level one. So salsa level one is easy to adopt, great, and uh, creates some visibility, so let's jump into it. So two requirements for salsa level one. Uh, it should be a scripted build, and the provenance should be available. So uh, when I think about implementing it, 
So nothing to implement since uh, the pipelines I've chosen are pipelines, and so they are scripted. Nothing to do over there. Of course, it could have value uh, for the uh, legacy non-scripted uh, pipelines, but that's not the mainstream of, of projects in our company. And when I look into the SALSA standard and look into the exact requirements of the provenance document, so I see that the required fields, it boils down to two fields, uh, the builder ID and the build type. And this, of course, is available from the uh, build systems themselves. So the provenance is available. It's over there. We know it's Jenkins. And we can also know the pipeline run, the, like the job run or its equivalent in uh, GitHub workflow, uh, workflows. So the provenance is available. So if it's so easy, I can jump right into SASA level two. SASA level two adds additional uh, requirements. The source should be version controlled. Build should be done by a service. And the provenance now should be authenticated and service generated. So before jumping into implementing this, I put uh, back my hacker hat and try to understand what is the value of these requirements. And I think it's, it boils down to uh, separating the build from the programmer's environment. So if the sources are version controlled, sources reside somewhere, not on, my, on the developer machine, and this would serve as a forensic tool, it would serve as a deterring um, mechanism, like if you're an attacker and you know everything is recorded in the version control, you need to be more careful. So it should deter the programmer or attacker who uh, caught the, the, builder, the, the programmer's machine. Also, building by a service takes the power from me as a programmer and puts it in some other service. And when the provenance is service generated, again, it's not me as a programmer writing down some provenance document. It's generated somewhere else. And uh, so it's, it's supposed to be better than uh, giving this uh, authority to the uh, programmer, programmer himself. OK, so let's move to uh, implementing it. So the source version control, again, once we're uh, talking about uh, modern projects, sources are version controlled. Not, not much to do. Uh, also, uh, modern projects would be built by a service. So we are left with a provenance that should be authenticated and service generated. So uh, the natural answer of the security expert to what is authenticated is signed. You sign and verify the signature. But if we uh, open up the Salsa documents, uh, so they wrote, and, uh, and uh, truthfully so, that uh, it should be authenticated, but it, it, it should be signed and using uh, you know, public key uh, cryptography. But it could be authenticated also in other, uh, other ways. So in my opinion, there were two options uh, to the provenance authenticity uh, to implement a provenance authenticity. One is uh, to consider the build service data as authenticated. And this, there is a logic behind it, because I trust the build system for doing the build. And also, Salsa assumes that uh, the, the build system is trusted. So, and even if I would give the uh, build system the ability to sign, again, I would trust on the build system for doing the signing. So. I don't get much from the signing. And the other option could be uh, to go ahead and implement provenance uh, signing. So uh, my decision was uh, going on both, but not, I'm not sure in the, in the way that the Salsa guys uh, meant at the beginning. So first, uh, in this case, I have like two hats, the hats of the consumer. I will need to sign off, uh, so I need to trust the artifacts that come to me. But we might need to prove to other people that uh, our artifacts are trusted. So I would, my, I myself, I would accept the build service uh, logs, uh, the build service data, like logs and API data as trusted. And uh, I would sign m myself as a DevSecOps guy. I could use any signing uh, technology. And what I would gain is that it would be easy. I would do it myself uh, in my station when I need to sign off something. 
and I would not need to go and integrate this signing into all the pipelines, or uh, the, all the, at least all the pipeline uh, mechanisms. And the value would be long-term provenance protection once it's signed, so I don't have to worry about uh, someone tampering with this piece of evidence. And it, uh, would, be, it would go more uh, smooth to other customers, which I would not have to convince why I trust the uh, build systems. Uh, they would go for the default uh, uh, answer of uh, authenticity uh, signing. So how would I go automating the evaluation of uh, the Salsa compliance? So we can collect data from the log files. Uh, if we want, we can optionally, optionally convert this data to a provenance document in the format that uh, Salsa um, suggests. And we can actually, as, as I said, uh, sign the provenance uh, document. So when we uh, give a look, at, we don't have to read all these uh, lines here, but if we give a look at, at, the, at the log files, we, we have most of the data, uh, at least the minimal data required, we have there, of course, and even much more. But uh, care should be taken. Like, um, you know, not, not, log, not all logs are created equal. If we look at the GitHub UX log and at the GitHub CLI tool logs, we get different results. And what is missing is the most important part. You know, the yellow part and the above will be displayed on the uh, GitHub app through the UX, but would not be display, displayed when you, would not be recorded when you use the CLI tool. And there, uh, uh, what's written there is, what was the build script that was used, and so on. So care should be taken here. Uh, also, uh, a similar anecdote is uh, the immutable reference. So when we said uh, that the sources should be uh, version controlled, the exact requirement is uh, we should use immutable references, a reference, a reference that would point exactly to the artifact and not a tag. You know, when we, do, when you, when we tag a version, it's a, it's a tag, it can be passed to any artifact, and it, that's what usually happens, that we have the tag of like, the main branch, and it every day would point to something else. So, uh, uh, so caution should be taken to take the, the right uh, data, but the data is there. Like if we can't get the data from the uh, GitHub uh, workflow log, we can get it from the GitHub uh, API, uh, workflow API, and know exactly the immutable reference needed. Okay, so uh, evaluation automated. Uh, automation is really easy. Collect data from log files and API calls, as we said before. So I was really happy and updated my CISO that we accomplished SASA level one and level two. What we have learned from this until now is that it's uh, in modern environments, it's given once you use a version control and a build system, you are, in fact, uh, SASA level two. Um, another lesson le learned is that uh, <coughs> when things are done compliance-driven, we should expect the minimal, uh, the minimal result. Uh, and that's why I went on with uh, the minimal provenance document with only the builder ID and the build uh, type. And why is it so? Because if I have the DevSecOps guy and I have a lot of, my a lot of tasks on my plate, I would uh, not have the time to, uh, uh, to excel in protecting my supply, uh, to, to my supply chain. I would do whatever was required if, if I measured on compliance. And if, I'm a, uh, if I am a consu consumer of software, so I must assume that that's what my supplier has done until he proved otherwise. So uh, when we go on a framework that is a compliance, uh, when we do compliance-driven uh, implementation of a framework, we should be aware that we would get, we, w we might get a minimal value, and uh, we should take care, uh, maybe negotiate with our uh, suppliers, and so on. Um, as you saw, I went on uh, building the provenance and doing everything from APIs and log files because in a larger organization with many pipelines, it's not legitimate to go ahead and say, okay, for this uh, salsa thing, I need to open up all the pipelines. That would not work. Uh, uh, signing, so signing is still an issue, is still an issue, and, and uh, that's why I went on looking into the authenticity of the build system logs themselves. 
Uh, it is true that one can use Sixtor and Spire and so on, but uh, and that what I, that's what I would use if I would sign myself on my station these uh, um, provenance documents. But going ahead and install it, installing it in many places and handling uh, the ramification of key systems such as revocation and uh, dealing with uh, with key leakage and uh, uh, you know, all the prices that come with uh, w with keying systems, uh, it's, it's still the issue. Um, of course, Sixtor uh, is a big promise here. So after describing all this to my CISO, we answered with the obvious question. So what, what, would get, what did we get from all this work about this uh, salsa? So I understood the hint and went to the next step in my salsa journey. Okay, so level three promises much more. Let's see what, uh, what are the requirements. So here we get uh, a long bunch of requirements, like uh, se seven requirements. Uh, and before diving into them, uh, again, w w when I put on my hacker hat and ask myself, what do we gain from here? So the protection from the uh, developer workstation gets, gets better. The X is a little larger, and we get uh, protection from uh, adjacent uh, build systems, uh, build runs, or from the history of the build runs. Like the ephemeral uh, requirement uh, would save us from uh, attacks that uh, left something on the build system that would influence the next build run, and isolated would prevent uh, uh, two pipelines from uh, influencing each other. And the provenance here is non falsifiable. We want uh, better evidence, better protected evidence. Okay, so source uh, verified. What exactly is the requirement? Every change in the revision history has to be uh, as at least one strongly authenticated actor. And along the salsa uh, requirements, uh, strongly authenticated means two factor or multi factor authentication. So as a modern organization, we would have. Uh, multi-factor authentication uh, deployed across the organization, but the exact requirement, every change is, uh, is quite a total uh, requirement, and it would be tough to uh, uh, comply to this, uh, to this requirement. Like imagine that uh, one day some uh, subcontractor lost his phone and he needs to work, and we in uh, uh, the natural uh, the solution would be to let them work one day with uh, single factor authentication, and uh, it would be in a risk management view, a reasonable solution. It's not he's working uh, his whole life uh, with single factor authentication, only like a few hours, and it would be okay. But I would lose my salsa accreditation. Uh, another challenge is strong authent authentication and the Git reality. So the natural solution for uh, uh, verifying source is using signed commits, but signed commits are not two-factor authenticated. They are, they're, they're based on a SSH keys that is stored on your machine. And if we use like uh, other tools of automating uh, code changes that use API, so API keys also are not uh, multi-factor authentication. Uh, let's go to the next uh, requirement. So uh, the next source requirement is that the sources should be retained indefinitely. And again, it's a quite, a, quite a total requirement, but should be noted that here uh, the Salsa guys gave a solution, but this solution is hard to implement. You could change the history, but this change should have two-party uh, two uh, approval, like a multi-sig uh, solution. And this, uh, this is not really uh, uh, a feature, that, a tool that is available. So if I want to implement it, implement it again, what, what would happen is that I would lose my accreditation because I had to do some history rewrite. And I, uh, I would not have the tools in place for the two-party approval of the deleting of the history. Why should I delete the history? Sometimes uh, it's just to clean up things. And sometimes, like if someone uh, committed by mistake a secret, so of course, the formal solution for a le uh, secret leakage is 
to go ahead and uh, um, make this secret uh, not, uh, not useful again. To, um, but it could take time. It could uh, be a secret that other systems also use. So uh, the quick solution, maybe the not the best solution, but, but the quick solution would be to uh, delete it from the repo as fast as I can. So uh, uh, again, uh, this is also a total uh, requirement that uh, could be a problem when implementing uh, Salsa. H how would I, so what are my options to uh, uh, implementing and uh, also in sense uh, automating the evaluation of these uh, requirements? So I could use signed commits and it would not, not be two-factor authenticated or I could continuously evaluate that, uh, uh, verify the two-factor authentication is enforced while the project is, is built uh, during the time of the commit, at least. And uh, so happily, in the discussions around the Salsa community, the signed commits uh, are appearing to be a legitimate solution for this requirement, so this would be the easy track for implementation. And again, using retained history, also, I could evaluate the branch protection rules and through the APIs or monitor the commit history and ver verify that it's continuous. You know, to see that uh, uh, once I saw a hash of a commit, I can always see it in the, in the future. Um, and for that, uh, for such reasons, uh, we just released uh, at the last week, uh, a GitHub uh, project named, uh, open source project named GitGut, which is aimed as, uh, it generates a report about your security posture of your GitHub account, and running it uh, continuously could uh, bring us close to uh, these requirements. Um, okay, so uh, we have two more uh, challenges in front of us for SASA Level 3. The, uh, uh, build requirements and the um, uh, provenance. Okay, so uh, hold up uh, for, the, uh, for, for these two requirements. So uh, as we said before, ephemeral and isolation requirements are uh, supposed to um, uh, make sure that pipelines don't influence, influence each other. But uh, there are natural shared resources between pipelines that we cannot uh, disconnect it's the build system itself, which could be accessed by the build runs, like if we want the build run to be part of the version uh, labeling of the software itself. When you do version uh, uh, to the software, you want to know, you might want to know its uh, build run. Uh, bumping could, uh, um, which is a technique in which the build system would uh, push up the version number of the build software. Uh, image repositories are a shared resource because they would be used also for base images, uh, parent images of the images built by the organization itself or build images, images using as build machines. Uh, and these are also like shared uh, resources. So how would I go ahead and uh, approach this uh, challenge? Um, okay, so uh, let's go one by one. So, uh, regarding the source control, what I could do is verify that I isolation was not exploited. I would not verify that it is isolated. I would verify that uh, even if it's not isolated, isolation was not exploited, and that's quite easy. I would go uh, review the, uh, the Git uh, commits and see that no commit was done during the period of the build. Um, the build service, so we said before, we need to trust some. We need to trust someone. And this someone is the build system itself, so we assume the build system itself trusted. There is also the build infrastructure. Like suppose uh, I do trust Jenkins, but if I run Jenkins over Kubernetes and I let uh, the runners uh, high uh, permissions access to the build machine, so of course uh, builds could influence each other, and this would require an internal checkup, like if in our organization we are aware of, uh, of uh, high permission risks and not running the Docker inside Docker and so on. So um, we would have in place our policies and we would need to check them up. And 
regarding the image repository, we could uh, also uh, verify its configuration, like make sure that only the, uh, that the build images, uh, everyone ha may, may, may have uh, read access to the parent images and build images, but only certain pipelines would have write access. So using this configuration, um, we would not care that it's a shared resource because only one could, could write to there. Uh, and regarding other resources, usually these fall into the category of dependencies, and happily, dependencies are a requirement only of SASA level four, so I could leave it for the next uh, stage. Um, so how would I go on evaluating it? So uh, I could verify that builds are done on fresh pods, and that's, uh, uh, you can see it in the uh, uh, Jenkins logs. Uh, on GitHub workflows, I would verify that I'm working on hosted runners, and once it's a hosted runner, GitHub promises that it's a, a fresh machine. And I would need to verify implementation of our security practices, that uh, no high permission uh, dockers are run on the build, and so on, and that this would be a tailored solution for our pipelines, and not a generic evaluation method. Um, Another thing that I would need to take into account is to uh, make sure that no ca caching is used. Um, like uh, there are also in GitHub and Jenkins the techniques to cache, and I, I would verify that uh, cache is not used in these cases. Um, okay, so we're left with the non-falsifiable provenance. Uh, the requirement is uh, that the provenance cannot be falsified by the build services users. Uh, I remind you what, uh, what was in the mind of the Salsa creators is to protect from the developers that could either, either influence the, what's built or the other builds that could uh, then further influence this artifact on hand. So since I wanted to rely on log files, are the log files falsifiable? So here I went on to make a quick experiment. So I created my version of Git, that's it these uh, five lines over there. I just print uh, git version 218 bad version, and I try to uh, combine it in a standard uh, GitHub workflow where I'm using the official uh, GitHub uh, checkout action, as you see at the bottom line over there. And what happens when we run this uh, build? So we see we can get, get quite far down the run of the pipeline. Of course, you can't get too far with the implementation of Git that only prints out on Git. Uh, but if I would do a hack on Git, I could go down the whole pipeline, implement whatever was needed by Git, and also bad actions, and report whatever I want. And like, so here I, I report uh, that I'm Git version 2.18, so I, I can get past uh, uh, a large part of the pipeline. Um, so, what we see here is that we should, again, be cautious on which data we are willing to use from the pipeline. So for unfalsified preference, the, uh, <coughs> what we understand is that we, should, that we should use only service-generated data, and logs are not, uh, should not be considered that the, the whole log file is service-generated. Of course, it says the log files are a combination of data that is generated by the service and data that is generated by the uh, tools that the programmer, the developer, decided to operate, and maybe he could also inject them and pull them into the pipeline, like in the example you saw a minute ago. And again, uh, uh, we could also sign it if, if needed. Okay, so it was, uh, now it was much more tough, but I could uh, report accomplished to my CISO. And what did we learn here? So uh, SASA level three is achievable on some platforms and setting, but not all. And if the infrastructure security is, uh, is not handled, I would not be able to uh, declare that the pipelines are isolated, for example. Uh, <clears throat> losing the SASA accreditation due to the total requirements is, uh, is a challenge and I think it's a limitation, and uh, there is a need of uh, some uh, uh, exception uh, handling uh, through which someone could be uh, authorized to sign off and say, okay, 
I, uh, even though the Farwell uh, check is not checked, um, it's okay. Um, okay, uh, some of the, when we come to implement such requirements at, a, at a, another organization, and we explain that Salsa level three will protect you better from the programmer, one of the questions that is asked is, okay, but we do a lot of effort in protecting the programmer's environment. We give him uh, uh, many tools on his machine, and we have uh, a security systems that track everything, so uh, are you sure that we need to do the additional uh, steps Salsa requires? Uh, again, Salsa does not give the, uh, the space to do this uh, risk uh, management uh, practice. And that's, uh, I think we may all know it, uh, the, the world of standards um, like has two, two flavors. One is the checklist uh, flavor and one is the uh, risk management flavor. So this is one of the downsides of the, uh, choosing the, the checklist uh, route. Okay, and uh, we saw non-falsifiable provenance should rely solely on, uh, um, on uh, service-generated data and, and care should be given about it. Okay, so, uh, okay, so uh, after reporting this, I got the natural answer from my CISO. If you accomplish level three, go, go ahead and do level four. So I open up level four and I see m many more requirements, but again, What's new here? We get better protection from the uh, programmer, from the developer, like the two-person reviewed requires uh, human eyes that would go uh, and, and see the code so that we know that the programmer uh, is not pushing malicious code and, and uh, the build is better protected from other builds and we see uh, a first addressing of the dependencies. So since the build requirements of SASA level three were the hard part, so I jumped straight into the build requirements of the SASA level four. So here the requirement, is, the tough one is hermetic. All transitive build steps, sources, and dependencies were fully cleared up front with immutable references, which means that you cannot uh, use like uh, in your package JSON, you cannot write uh, of course, you cannot use uh, any hat, you know, that you don't care about the version or, or uh, any minor version. You need to say, I want to use, uh, I don't know, colors, and this is the hash of, the, of its commit. Um, so here I was defeated. Um, it would require re-engineering of all the pipelines. You, we would need to go into every pipeline and uh, to, pin, uh, to pin all the dependencies and to find somewhere their... Uh, immutable references and the tools. Uh, so it may be implemented for specific projects if we have a customer that is uh, willing to pay for the additional uh, cost needed to do such a thing. We would craft him a, a specialized pipeline, but to go ahead and as an organization to push forward and better protect our supply chain, we would not go for SASA level four. Okay, so a few words about what we have learned here. Uh, so Salsa, an emerging interesting uh, standard, and as an emerging standard, it on one hand uh, puts many requirements on the table that we could go and implement, and on the other hand, there are still things that need to be approved, uh, improved. Some concerns were that many depends on the developer and, what, and his decisions, and as a consumer, we must pay attention on what we are getting. Uh, other concerns were the total, totality of some requirements and the lack of some tools. And uh, okay, and we saw that most of the many parts can be evaluated in, from level, SASA level three on. Evaluation depends, it needs to be tailored to the organization. Thank you. Okay. okay. Do we have time for questions? One question. Who's second? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, so what, what you would need to do with logs is you would need to uh, handpick 
what part of the logs you are willing to take. Like uh, at the beginning of the, uh, if you look at uh, Jenkins uh, log, it's quite clear what was uh, created by Jenkins and what are the logs of the, uh, uh, the tools that were run by Jenkins. Okay, so that would be the starting point to, uh, to approach it. Okay. Do you have time for another one? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get it. Yes, okay, so the question was, uh, um, like in the threat modeling view, did the SALSA address the threats that I would anticipate needed to be uh, handled? And I would say um, uh, not all of them, and the, the emphasis wa would be that we should listen to the SALSA language, which speaks about integrity. There's no requirements about uh, vulnerability management and dependencies wait only for level four, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure that, these, that this prioritization is right in the broader view. So it also states that it's focused on integrity, so you, you would get integrity. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Good